Andrew parked at the mall and looked out the window. It was an early August evening. The day was already tending to sunset, but it gets dark late in summer. The cool, fresh twilight is still far away. Andrew had a difficult day at work, checking, summarizing the results for the month, developing a new project, but the man even liked this multitasking. Firstly, it is interesting to solve constantly emerging issues. It looks like an exciting game. Secondly, at the end of the month, there will be a good increase to the already high salary. And thirdly, work issues distract from sad thoughts, do not allow you to plunge into the past. Fatigue, workload, that's the salvation from heavy feelings. Andrew was in no hurry to get out of the car. It's nice and cool in the cabin, but it's hot outside. There has been an abnormal heat wave for several weeks now. People are looking forward to autumn to breathe freely. Andrew looked out the window again. Two people came into his field of vision, a middle-aged man and a thin teenage boy. He's tall, a little angular. He was walking and talking animatedly with his father about something, gesticulating active and light gait, tanned long arms, legs, feet, fashionable sneakers. When Andrew saw boys like that, he always thought that he could have had exactly the same son now. He would have turned 14 this summer. Perhaps the son would be interested in programming or sporks, football, or maybe he would have loved to draw. But what's the point of thinking about it if this boy wasn't even born, or maybe it wasn't a boy at all, but a girl? But some sixth sense told Andrew that many years ago he had lost his son and through his own fault. To think otherwise is just to try to justify yourself and deceive yourself. How many times over the years has Andrew regretted his behavior? But time cannot be turned back. He could only suffer from guilt, yearn for the future that had happened, miss Victoria, and try in vain to look for her features in others, to search and of course not to find. Andrew was different then, young, selfish somewhere, even windy. Before meeting Victoria, he did not want to remember himself at all, the old one. I felt ashamed. How could he behave like that? Andrew realized that thoughts and memories were taking hold of him again. This happened sometimes. Some situations from the past, voices, images, all this still did not let him go, and the man assumed that he would not let, well, he deserved that kind of life. Andrew was born and grew up in a well-off family for his city. His father is a successful businessman. His mother is the chief accountant of a large factory. A big, beautiful house, expensive toys, fashionable clothes travel. Andrew knew no refusal in anything. In addition to his parents, he was actively pampered by his grandparents on both sides. The boy realized early on that there was a kind of competition between them. Who does his grandson love more? And the cunning boy began to use this. He played on the feelings of elderly relatives, manipulated them, and achieved everything he wanted. Andrew studied at a prestigious gymnasium. He always had a lot of friends there, boys and girls. They formed a strong and very cheerful company. All these were children from wealthy families, so teenagers did not deny themselves anything. Cafes, attractions, entertainment centers. Later, expensive clubs, hangouts in bars. Andrew's life was fun and carefree. He entered the local university, did not want to go to the capital, as his father did not persuade him. There's a completely different level, different perspectives. The parent inspired the overgrown offspring, but this very offspring understood perfectly well that he would not have the freedom there that he had here. He would have to study there, poring over textbooks, otherwise he would not get a diploma. And here he's already got it all figured out on a tip from older friends. He knew who and how much to pay before the session, so as not to waste his youth on lectures and seminars, and the boy was not going to deviate from his plans. As always, everything turned out exactly as he wanted it to. Andrew became a student at the economics department of a local university, and a golden era of life began for him. The guy moved out from his parents. My grandmother and grandfather, on my father's side, gave my only grandson an apartment in the city center in honor of graduation, and my grandmother and grandfather on my mother's side, in an effort to keep up with relatives, presented him with the keys to an expensive foreign car. Andrew felt happy, omnipotent, independent. There was a bright, happy life ahead, friends, entertainment, beautiful girls. 
There was simply no room for studying in this busy schedule. Andrew hardly showed up at the university, so he visited before the session to resolve issues with the teachers. It was an ordinary thing. Andrew was now ashamed of his attitude towards girls. Back then, in his student years, the guy probably considered them beautiful things created especially for him and people like him. Andrew did not take into account the feelings of the girls, did not listen to their desires and chose his companions like a product in a store purely based on external data. In his youth, he liked ladies with model data necessarily big-mouthed and uninhibited, smart. He just didn't look at the others. The handsome, wealthy guy had no shortage of girlfriends. The girls themselves stuck to him, approached him to get acquainted in a club or cafe, even lay in wait at the door of the university and attracted attention with some request. Naturally, in this scenario, Andrew felt like a valuable prize. It seemed to him that anything was possible. Sometimes Andrew got bored with easy relationships. He always liked difficult tasks and he himself paid attention to some girl. He tried to get her. It was a kind of hunter and prey game. Some ladies have been pretending to be inaccessible beauties for a while the game had begun and he used all his charm to break the resistance. He loved it, creating something like a beautiful fairy tale. Hi, huge bouquets of roses, cute plush toys, exquisite jewelry, and also bold, reckless acts like a love song with a rock band under the windows of another beauty. Andrew liked to come up with something new, to surprise, to inspire delight and admiration. And now the coldest snow queen is melting in his arms. When the game ended, Andrew's interest quickly waned. Having seemed so mysterious and attractive until recently, the girl suddenly became boring and uninteresting. Andrew pulled away. He became bored, bored. He could not stand the dullness in his everyday to part with another lady of the heart. I had to be a little sad. It was no longer as exciting and pleasant as the beginning of a relationship. But what can be done? Andrew didn't like women's tears. He was burdened by long conversations and pleas. All this was depressing and made me feel like a bad person. Therefore, Andrew preferred the tactics of accusation. He always found something to blame for a passion that did not want to accept a breakup. Everyone had weaknesses. Yes, maybe it was too cruel. It is possible that the girls had complexes after such attacks by Andrew, maybe even psychological trauma. Well, how else? Otherwise, they just kept up. Different situations have happened in Andrew's life. One of his former lovers, Veronica, distinguished herself especially, and after this story, Andrew became much more careful. Andrew met Veronica at a nightclub. She was a girl of his type. Bright, beautiful, liberated. She was dancing so enthusiastically on the dance floor that it was simply impossible not to notice her. The girl was clearly already a little Her long hair fluttered beautifully as Veronica turned in the dance. The girl was the center of attention and clearly enjoyed it. Andrew just recently broke up with Aliona. They had been dating for almost three months, a record for a young man, and now the guy was in search of new adventures. Of course, he immediately decided that this evening he would leave the club only with her, with a beautiful young woman in a daring miniskirt and high-platform sandals. Veronica looked somewhat vulgar. Andrew immediately realized that he would not be bored with this girl. The guy didn't come up to her right away. We need to take a closer look first. He admired Veronica for about an hour before deciding to get closer. The girl came to the club with her friends. They had long since returned to their table, but Veronica still did not leave the dance floor. She enjoyed it all. A mics, the atmosphere of the club, the loud music, her own movements. It was very attractive. Andrew just smiled at her, catching his gaze. She froze for a moment. Her huge blue eyes burned Andrew from head to toe, and then their gazes met again. Andrew admired the girl's face, which immediately attracted his attention. Up close, she turned out to be even more beautiful than seen from afar. Chiseled cheekbones, well-defined lips, huge, simply bottomless eyes. The girl suddenly, without saying a word, came close to Andrew. The guy, as if fascinated, watched her movements and waited, waited for what would happen next. The beauty clearly took the initiative and it was very interesting and unusual, not according to the script. Veronica stared into Andrew's eyes and kissed him. He, not believing in what was happening, hugged the girl, hugged her to him. She didn't mind. Then they danced together. Andrew realized that he was fascinated by this strange girl. 
He really liked the twinkle in her eyes, a kind of gleam of light madness. He had never had such friends before. She was very different from the others. Then they did get to know each other and found out each other's names. Oh, I've never met anyone like this before. Andrew admired her. Oh, it's not surprising. There are simply no more people like me, Veronica smiled. Veronica rented a room in the city. Once she came here from the village and even managed to enter a law school, but the girl's soul never really lay down to study. Although she was definitely not deprived of her abilities, she just liked entertainment, socializing, dancing until morning in nightclubs, adventures. All this did not go down well with the role of a diligent student. In her first year, the beautiful Veronica fell in love with a young and charismatic history teacher, so much so that I couldn't even think about anything but his gray eyes. The girl has always been distinguished by her direct character. She's used to taking what she likes. And of course, Veronica did not hide her feelings from this young professor. He could not resist the charms of a young beauty. Everything became known at the dean's office. The professor was forced to resign, but Veronica herself was expelled at the first opportunity. I must say it was not difficult because the girl rarely bothered to attend lectures. In her student life, she was attracted to a completely different... The girl did not want to return to the village. It was boring and it was stuffy there. From an early age, she dreamed of escaping from this swamp, but it was impossible to stay in the hostel, which was provided only to students after the expulsion. So I had to get a job as a waitress in a bar. I had to take money for food and housing somewhere. They needed beautiful waitresses to lift their spirits. The visitors paid well. There was enough to rent a small apartment and for food and even inexpensive but spectacular clothes from local economy class boutique. Veronica was completely satisfied with such a life. The work is not dusty. The atmosphere is pleasant. It was a big bar. Many guests gathered here every evening and local musicians, mainly rock bands and rock soloists, performed. Veronica liked this music. In general, she felt in her element here. Of course, the guests, the staff, and the musicians paid attention to the young beauty. It was in this bar that the girl met Dimitri, her first true love. He was the lead singer of the band, who enjoyed the greatest success here. In general, they soon began to live together. Dimitri showed Veronica the world. They traveled to many cities in America. Dimitri's band toured the country, giving concerts here and there, hangouts, train stations, bars, and even concert halls. Then, as often happens, Dimitri met another muse. Veronica had been going through a breakup for a long time, but then decided that it was not worth wasting her youth on longing and regret. Moreover, she has a fan again. Veronica consciously decided not to fall in love anymore. Twice it didn't do her any good. Now she just lived, enjoyed companionship, youth, freedom, got nothing but pleasure from life, and did not think about the future. She was a little crazy, and that attracted Andrew a lot to her. He himself lacked her lightness and wildness. Veronica could get behind the wheel after a bottle of champagne and drive past the police at high speed. She fearlessly sat on the roofs of high-rise buildings, hanging down her long legs, easily converged with people. She even committed shoplifting, not out of necessity, but just for the excitement. Yes, there was a lot more. It's impossible to list everything. Andrew has never been bored with her. He didn't know what to expect from the girl in the next moment, and it was dizzying. Veronica wrote poetry and played the guitar masterfully. She also joked wittily and sang beautifully. She always attracted people to her. A man is a holiday next to whom it is never boring, and this amazing girl was head over heels in love with Andrew, despite the fact that she once promised herself never to fall in love again. You're special, Veronica said, looking at Andrew seriously. I feel good with you. You understand me? My soul, you are the best. Andrew melted away from these words and really felt unique. It was nice to realize that Veronica, who invariably attracted men's gazes wherever she appeared, was so devoted to him. She had many acquaintances. It seemed that the whole city was her friends, but the girl did not have a close relationship with anyone. Hanging out, going somewhere together is welcome. Only here she poured out her soul to Andrew alone. Veronica did not communicate with her parents anymore because they always wanted to mold her into something else, to remake her, to make her who she really is not. What can I say? The girl sighed sadly. 
They actually wanted a son. And that's probably why they didn't like everything about me. Veronica didn't laugh like that, too loud and bubbly. Didn't talk like that too much and fast. I was friends with the wrong people. I didn't study well enough. I behaved provocatively. In general, the girl was picked on about and with that's why she decided to run away from home as early as possible, go to university, and go to the city. The father chose the specialty for his daughter. He decided that she was obliged to become a lawyer, and she agreed. It was simply impossible to argue with the parent. Well, already in the city, having escaped from the total control of her mother and father, the girl finally decided to become herself, which she never regretted. When they found out that I had dropped out of the university, they wanted to bring me back and raise me. But how did I imagine it? Well, no way. I went against my father's will, and he said that in that case, I was no longer their daughter and I could no longer count on their help. Live as you like. That's what he told me. Well, that's what I needed. So I live as I know, and I don't regret anything. Andrew was amazed listening to Veronica's stories. She was a whole year younger than him. I've already experienced so much in my life. I've seen so much. Time passed and Veronica, with her endless hangouts, began to tire Andrew. He sometimes wanted to spend an evening at home in front of the TV, but the girl dragged him outside again and again. Sometimes she was drawn to the bar with irresistible force. Then she offered to jump into the river right from the bridge on the city embankment, then just walk around the night city the adventurism of the girl. So attractive earlier turned into a significant disadvantage for Andrew, to live without ever knowing what to expect from this abnormal. Once it was exciting and pleasing, now it was annoying. Veronica loved Andrew. The guy felt it, understood it, and assumed, of course, that parting with her would not be, but he couldn't even imagine what followed. Andrew became more and more convinced that it was time to part with her. She had been living in his apartment for almost a year, there were her things everywhere. Andrew hadn't even imagined what her move would look like yet. Is she packing her bags and going nowhere? A difficult moment. He had never invited girls to his house to live together before. And in general, he had not been together with anyone for so long and he did not know how to get out of the situation. Veronica noticed that something was wrong between them. She asked questions and Andrew was thoughtfully silent, sometimes sighing sadly, preparing the ground. Let Veronica figure out for herself where everything is going. Maybe you won't have to explain yourself. And yet the explanation took place. It happened on a December evening. Andrew then returned from university tired and angry. A diploma is on his nose and he got an uncooperative leader. This man flatly refused to take money and demanded serious work on his diploma. Andrew was already physically unable to manage by the right date. And then there was Veronica with her eternal carefree smile on her lips and untimely offers. What are you worried about? Just think, a diploma. She shrugged her elegant shoulders and people live without a diploma. And then Andrew couldn't stand it. It discontent that had accumulated for several months broke out. He shouted at Veronica, called her selfish and a dummy who lives at the expense of others and does not think about the future. There was so much pain and horror in the girl's eyes as she listened to this. Mm, I'm sorry, I'll be the way you want me to be. Mm, she said softly when Andrew finished his angry tirade. The guy was taken aback. This girl has been fighting for the right to be herself and behave the way she wants for so long. And then suddenly it happened. Veronica said she was ready to remake herself to please him, but it's too- I'm sorry I yelled at you, Andrew said, pulling himself together. But still, we have to break up. I have been wanting to tell you about this for a long time and didn't dare. Now it somehow turned out. No, the girl exclaimed. There was desperation in her voice. She was clearly not going to accept it. No, no, Veronica, in a fit of emotion, swept a vase off the table. It hit the tile on the floor and crumbled into thousands of small fragments. Oh, you can't, you can't do this. You can't drive me away, push me away. Maureen Ecker, we are adults. I love you more than anyone in this world. Don't you understand? Andrew looked at Veronica, who was hysterical, and realized more and more clearly that she was really abnormal. It used to seem so attractive and mysterious. Now, it is repulsive, frightening, pathetic, and unpleasant. Go away, Andrew said, walking with his back to the door. 
He tried to dodge her embrace. Veronica clung to him like a drowning man to a straw. He managed to get her out the door then. Where will she go? Andrew wasn't particularly worried about this. Veronica has a lot of friends in the city, and there are also fans who will gladly take her in. She will not be lost. Andrew packed Veronica's belongings into two large bags that evening. Cruel, of course. But he doesn't have to put up with an abnormal woman next to him now if he was once stupid enough to bring her into his house. These things were then taken away by one of Veronica's friends. She contacted Andrew herself. How is she? The guy asked, more out of politeness. According to all the rules of social protocol, he simply had to ask this question. You see, she cries all the time. She doesn't want anything, her friend said sadly. Andrew nodded. He hoped that very soon Veronica would be comforted and meet a new love. This has happened many times in her life, a common thing for Veronica, but she was not comforted. Moreover, she began to pursue Andrew with her usual obsession. One day, she showed up at his university in an outfit resembling a monk's. A mournful look, a floor-length skirt, beautiful hair, a scarf. I'm changing for you, she said softly, looking at Andrew. You see, I'm trying very hard. I'm different now, submissive, obedient. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. It's not just a scarecrow. Furthermore, declarations of love and pleas for forgiveness began to appear on the walls of the entrance where Andrew's apartment was located. Veronica also flooded the guy with emails and paper letters. Some of them were even written in verse. Wherever Andrew went, he came across it, whether it was a shopping mall, a cafe, a bar, just a park. Finally, Veronica pursued him, begged for attention, even threatened him. Andrew didn't know where to go from her. Persuasion did not help. Veronica didn't seem to be listening to him. She continued to bend her line, and it was frightening. One day, she attacked him. Andrew has just defended his diploma. He was returning home after a celebration dedicated to this long-awaited event. It was already very late. There's not a soul on the street. Andrew got out of the taxi, paid the driver, and went to his entrance in a good mood. Veronica flew at him like a fury, dressed all in black and therefore indistinguishable from the background of the morning landscape. If you don't want to be with me, then no one will get you. And Veronica attacked Andrew. He was surprised and did not even immediately begin to resist. The girl possessed some truly superhuman strength at that moment, be still a man, which means that in any case, he is more physically powerful. Andrew, of course, managed to push the attacker away from him. Veronica fell on the asphalt, hit her back hard. What are you doing? Andrew exclaimed, B.A.K. I'm completely out of my mind. I'm sorry. Big tears were flowing down her cheeks. I don't know what came over me. I love you. How could I? Andrew disappeared into the entrance, slamming the door loudly. His heart was restless now. Veronica made a mistake today. This attempt was doomed to failure in advance. What if next time she lunged at him with a knife? Being afraid of a girl is something new. Andrew found himself in an unenviable position. And the very next day, the same Veronica friend who took her things called him and in a broken voice informed him that Veronica was trying to leave this world. The girl did not succeed. At the last moment, the rope snapped. She was noticed in time. Help arrived very quickly, but now Veronica is in intensive care. Andrew didn't know what to do. He felt guilty about what had happened to this girl. On the other hand, the guy was still afraid of her terrible, unpleasant feelings. Everything ended well for Andrew. Veronica survived, but she was diagnosed with a disease that debuted due to extreme stress. The guy preferred not to think about what exactly was the cause of that stress. Veronica was sent to a closed clinic. Andrew learned from mutual friends that her parents are now visiting her. Apparently, they realized that they really needed their wayward dot friends also sometimes went to Veronica's hospital, but Andrew never met her again. And anyway, he really wanted to forget this whole difficult story, but it didn't work out. That was probably the first time he thought about what was wrong with girls. To him, they are just things beautiful and valuable, but things, how many women's tears were shed because of him. He never considered the feelings of his girlfriends. They, many of them, loved him so sincerely. Since then, Andrew has become much more careful. Now he listened more attentively to the girls, noticed a lot, tried to be more sensitive and helpful. 
and he always kept a safe distance. Light, easy novels, pre-agreed conditions, no romance but no surprises, Veronica was enough for him. Andrew graduated from the university. His father got him a good position at a local city-forming enterprise. The salary is more than decent. The career prospects are impressive. Andrew plunged into his work. He was not an important student, but he turned out to be a wonderful employee. The guy delved into all the nuances, engaged in self-education, looked at more experienced colleagues. As for his personal life, Andrew has not yet thought about any serious relationship. They actively tried to introduce him to girls from decent families, but Andrew was like a flea. He didn't want a wedding yet, much less children. It seemed that he hadn't had enough fun yet, and he didn't need any extra problems. The story of Veronica was still fresh in my memory. Superficial relationships, in which everyone understood everything from the very beginning. Novels without prospects, arising solely for an easy and pleasant pastime. This was quite acceptable to Andrew. This went on for several years. Andrew took place in the profession. Now he was in good standing with his company. He was respected. The young specialist was promoted up the career ladder. And this was already the result of his merits and not the result of the efforts of an authoritative father. By the way, the parents were very proud of their son. They didn't even think he'd be any good anymore. He behaved